Good evening, everyone. You are now listening to WLS, the voice of Prairie Farmer, Chicago. The Johnson Wax Program. Everybody, the makers of Johnson's Wax lead you to another load of lusty, lively laughs and lovely, luscious lyrics with Rico Martelli's orchestra, Audrey Call, and that outstanding, outrageous outfit of outlying outskirts, Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Martelli and his men lead off with Say It With Music. Say it, senor. timely suggestion. To protect your windowsill so they will not be ruined by the snow that drifts in, be sure to give them a coat of Johnson's Wax. is going to wind up as a jack of all trades, with no trade and less jack. Two weeks ago, he was hounded out of the dog business. Last week, he turned out to be a dope in the drug game. But maybe he's hitting his stride now as a restaurant man. Yes, sir, here we find him at the big all-American restaurant in Wistful Vista, Nick the Populous Proprietor, about to embark on another career with the faithful Molly along as advisor. Kind of a high-class joint, ain't it, Molly? What makes you think so, McGee? Oh, look at the sign. Watch your hat and coat. Chuck, nobody ain't going to swipe no cheap coats, are they? Good coats, nice people. See to it? <laughs> oh, I don't know, McGee. More Toops was telling me he ate in here, and while he was watching his coat, somebody stole his spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's keeping Mr. Uh, Mr. What's his name again, McGee? The Populous. Nick the Populous. <laughs> That's a fine name for a restaurant owner. Nick the Populous. <laughs> I wonder where he is, McGee. He's probably out in the kitchen cooking up some New Deal soup. What might New Deal soup be? That's uh, alphabet soup with three A's took out of it. <laughs> you get it, Molly? I said... Ah, that ain't funny, McGee. Okay. <clears throat> How'd Mort say the food was here, Molly? Oh, he didn't complain about the food, only the service. Service? Sure, he says he got those. He'd only order a couple of hickory nuts for lunch. Hickory nuts? Yes. Yeah. He said the waitress couldn't get her thumbs into those. <laughs> Hello, kids. Oh, hi there, Nick, old kid. <laughs> I'm glad you like for to make the terrific happiness. 
This is fine in the restaurant business. Always cheerful. That is the successfully way how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. Uh, Molly, meet up with Mr. Depopolis. Nick, uh, this, here's my wife, Molly. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Depopolis. I'm fine, too. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sir Nick, I'm raring to get on the job. What do I do? Head waiter? No. Uh, the populace is for to have no head waiting. Just to wait. Just to wait for what? Just to waiting on the tablets, Mr. McGee. Are you having some experiments? I guess not, you hope? <laughs> Give me a second helping of that, Nick. I didn't quite get it. <laughs> McGee, he wants to know what experience you've had in restaurants. Sure. Experiments is the best teaching. <laughs> well, sir, I had me quite a bit of experience, Nick. Down in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Mr. Chusnitz. Oh, sure. I'm having six restaurants that place once. Oh, you did, eh? Well, sir, I was quite a figure in the restaurant game myself. Being head waiter at the old Herple Hoop Hotel. Sure. A head waiter. <laughs> He waited and waited and never got ahead. <laughs> Hi ho, McGee! They called me in them days, Nick. Hi ho, McGee! The handsome hawk-eyed, high-pressure head waiter of the Herple Hoop Hotel in Hampton. <laughs> Why, well, mind one time I'm. Oh, don't be gabby, McGee. Maybe Mister DePopolis wants you to start work. Do you, Pop? Sure. <laughs> I'm glad you report to having those fine experiments in the restaurant business. Uh, you should make very good. Very good what? Dishwashing. Huh? <laughs> Dishwashing? <laughs> Who, me? No, sir, not me, Nick. Why? That'd be like hiring this here fellow Professor Einstein to do little Willie's homework. Now, don't be proud, McGee. Pride goes before a fall, you know. Just before a fall, I'll own this binary. <laughs> Listen here, Nick. A minute ago, you said you wanted me to wait table. Now, you says dishwashing. Sure, that's a fine way to doing it. Part time wash dishes. Part time wait tablings. Part time makes changing for to be cashiers. Always got to keep him plenty busy in the restaurant business. <laughs> You'll be so busy, McGee, I'll have to get you out with a habeas corpus. <laughs> uh, who's you mentioning his name, lady? Habeas corpus. Oh, sure, habeas corpus. He's my second cousin. <laughs> <laughs> habeas corpus, he is doubly populous. He is for running the new depopulous person and restaurant business in a high-class neighborhood in Chicago. That's so. On Missy Goose Bouillard. <laughs> Well, now, what do you say we get started, Nick? Huckley duckley. Uh, come on out in the restaurant, Mr. McGee. Uh, just call me Fibber, bud. Huckley duckley, Fibber. <laughs> Suppose you are part to showing me of your experiments in uh, how you're carrying dishes loaded for trays, you think? Uh-oh. What do you mean, oh-oh, Molly? Why, shucks, ain't nothing to carrying a load of dishes onto a tray. Just a matter of being sure-footed and having a sense of balance. Ain't it, Nick? Sure, that's uh, fine for having a balance, is also, it is good tricks for to have no soupings on the floor. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no soupings on the floor and no eggings on the bed. <laughs> you like for to try carrying a tray full of dishes, Fizzer? You betcha. Well, now, here's a lot of dishes. I hold the tray for you whilst you're going No, no, it. Cupid. He should be for doing it alone. Well, don't think I can't do it alone, Nick. Watch this. Mr. DePopolis. Look at him pile them up. He's not very good restaurant, people. He's for putting little dishes on the bottom under beneath the big dishes. This will make for teeter topplings and pretty soon crossings on the floor and bang goes a profit. Hey, remembering, Peter, the waiters always pay for their own breaking. What's that, Nick? Uh, how am I doing? Already you pile a bigger pile of dishes than most people in the restaurant's business. Can you carry in this load? <laughs> You get that, Molly? Yeah. He wants to know if Fibber McGee can tote a few yeah. saucers. <laughs> Why, shucks, Nick, you ain't seen nothing. Yes, I hope not. <laughs> Maybe you better let me give you a hand, McGee. Stand back, Molly, I'll handle her. One more of these platters. A sugar bowl. A bottle of ketchup. If I cut it, I don't think he'll make it. <laughs> now then, Nick, watch this. Up you go, McGee. Up, up. Ah, there. You see how easy he done it? Give me a push to get started, Molly. Okay, McGee. I said push, not shove. McGee, straighten your knees. I, I can't. Watch him, Mr. DePopolis. I bet he don't drop a single teaspoon. That's fine. Just set him down there on the table by the door, McGee. Right here. That's okay. There. there you are, Nick. How's that? Never cracked the cup. He didn't think you could do it, McGee. Hmm. <laughs> it looks like I jumped at a convulsion. <laughs> 
Why, shucks, Nick, that was nothing. Why, well, I mind one time at a banquet for the Johnson Wax Salesman up in Racine, Wisconsin, I carried out the dishes on a bed. On a bed? Always my waitress is for using trays. No. <laughs> no, Mr. DePopolis, on a bed. They bet McGee he couldn't carry the dishes out and not bust any. Am I right, McGee? You betcha. There was 252 salesmen eating there and counting about nine dishes apiece. That's and... about 3,250. No, it's about 2,250. You're a, you're a thousand too much, Mr. DePopolis. Sure, Chupi. In the restaurant business, <laughs> when you make out the check, first guessing is always too much. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I got one big tray, loaded all them 2,250 dishes onto it, and waltzed them out into the kitchen without dropping a single poppy seed off in a single roll. Oh. That's why I said... That's why maybe I think you should be carrying these dishes back to the kitchen. Tables in restaurants this is no places for dirty dishes. Oh, shucks, Nick. I, I showed you I could carry him, didn't I? Well, McGee, go on. Carry him out to the kitchen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Up you go. Up. Stay. This way. You think he can make it, Coopy? Oh, don't you worry about McGee. I make him wash and dry the dishes every night. He does. Look out for the door, McGee. <laughs> One door is for going out from. One door is for coming in sideways. It is very fine ideas with trays full of dishes to use door for properly usefulness. See? Now you pair gums get up and sweeping broken dishes, hopeless. <laughs> Before we go back to Mr. Nick the Populous Restaurant, I want to tell you that a great many restaurants, beauty shops, and stores of all kinds have found that proper floor care is a vital necessity to any business which depends on making a good impression on the general public. Floors that are wax polished are more attractive to customers, actually help business because they look so much cleaner and brighter. Managers of restaurants and beauty shops, as well as office buildings, find that waxing saves both money and time in the upkeep of large floor areas. Wax seals the pores and cracks of wood and linoleum against dirt and grime and does away with the old-fashioned methods of floor scrubbing. S.C. Johnson and Son Incorporated, Racine, Wisconsin, makers of Johnson's Wax, will gladly send any businessman or woman information and samples of their product, especially packaged and priced for use on large floor areas. Please write on your business letterhead. And now, our little solo violinist, Audrey Call, is going to play her own arrangement of With All My Heart. For Sissimo Carissima? No, Sissicato, kiddo. <laughs>
back in the, the populous restaurant, we find that Fibber is going to get another chance to make good after he paid for his broken dishes. Here are Nick, Molly, and Fibber going through the kitchen. My, my, look how clean and shiny everything is, McGee. It is kind of bright at that end, Molly. Mm, and look at that roast chicken. Hot dog. <laughs> I think I'll just try a leg and see how good the cooking is here, Molly. McGee, let things alone. Is he supposed to sample things, Mr. DePopolis? Those chickens he's not supposed for eating. Oh, now don't give me that stuff, Nicky. <laughs> I never could resist a nice roasted chicken like that. You hold her, Molly, whilst I rip off a leg. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I think I'm going to like working here. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Why, that dead ratted chicken is made out of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> you see, wise people? Huh? I'm foretelling you. Those chickens is not for eating. He is for the people pulling in the front window. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for trying to pull his leg, McGee. <laughs> Ain't funny, Molly. What's in that door there, Nick? Uh, that is a linen closet. A uh, tablecloth, napkins, aprons. Oh. <laughs> How about the big door there? Is that the safe? <laughs> sure, Cupid. That's where I save my fresh meats from spoiling. <laughs> Oh, the icebox, huh? Refrigerator to you, McGee. Smertenly. It's a fine thing in a restaurant business for to have a big refrigerator. Uh, come, see. Heavenly day. Look at the meat hanging in there, McGee. Looks like it'd feed the Army and Navy and have a little left over for the Marines. Marines? Yeah. My restaurant don't serve seafood. <laughs> Well, it's kind of cold in here, ain't it? What, do you expect to come in here and roast marshmallows? Now, look. On these hooks, I'm for to keeping biffs. Biffs? Oh, oh, I get it, Nick. <laughs> kind of a steer house for stores and a storehouse for steers. <laughs> ah. <laughs> funny, McGee. Heavenly day, let's get out of here before we freeze. Properly, Dudley. Uh, come, I'll show you the different departments of the kitchen. Mm. Look at the stove. It must be 40 feet long. Yes, and I'd like to see the whole dead red at top of it covered with buckwheat cake. <laughs> hey, what's this little squirt gun for, Nick? McGee, don't be getting into this. Huh? No, no, Peter. Maybe I should perhaps warning you. Huh? This chef, he is very squeamerish. He has bad tempering. If you should fork to annoy him, he is undoubtedly to killing you with a cleaver, I believe it. Why, <laughs> I ain't scared of no dead ratted cook. Be careful, McGee. He's got a wild look in his eyes. And look at them shoulders. He must be as strong as a bull. Lady, he is a bull. He's cousin to Jim Landos, champion wrestling people. Oh. Say, you trying to scare me, Nick? Why, <laughs> shucks, I can handle your dead ratted cook. McGee, he's looking right at you. Oh. <laughs> Hiya, brother. How are you? <laughs> See, that's what he does when he gets smart. Oh. He is for looking very sour, puss, at you. <laughs> now, uh, what is it you were telling me about a question, is it? Well, McGee was asking what the little squirt gun was for. I suppose that's to kill flies with or something. Oh, no, no, Caesar. Flies we are not having in good restaurants. Uh, this little squidget he is for making the beautiful, pretty fun things on the pastry. You grab me? Oh. <laughs> I... You squirt out the whipped cream and stuff for icing the cake. Sure. You're grabbing on quick, Cupid. <laughs> well, my ship, that's what I thought it was for. I suppose all you do is turn this here little handle. And... <laughs> oh. oh. McGee, look what you done, Eagerness. Ah. Squirted it right into the cook's face. <laughs> McGee, listen to that. He's sharpening his knife. Oh, sure. He is now maybe wondering if or to use cleaver on you or make a simple slicing of you with carver knife. <laughs> my shucks, bud. Excuse me. My, uh, I, uh, uh, my hand slipped. McGee, keep away from me. Sure. He is liable to make a hamburger sandwich out of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> accident is accident. Uh, I'm real sorry, Mr. Chef. Oh, sure. <laughs> you see? He is madly in hate with you. <laughs> Listen, try and behave yourself, McGee. He'll get over it. What's in this big kettle, Mr. DePopolis? Why, shucks, Molly, don't you know what that is? <laughs> That's salad dressing. <laughs> no, Fizzy. You are mistaking soup for what are dressing salads. 
This is vegetable zoo. Oh, vegetable zoo. In restaurant business, there is always vegetable zoo. Even if earthquakes or buildings burning down, as long as we have water, there will be vegetable zoo. <laughs> Here, Nikki, I suppose the help uses that to play cards on when business is dull, huh? Uh, no, no, Fiesler. This block is for chopping cabbages for cold flour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. Hand me that head of cabbage there, Molly. Be kind to it, McGee. There's more brains in that head than in yours. <laughs> oh, is that so? Look here. Watch how I used to instruct the chef in cabbage chopping when I was metered to hotel at the Walbrook Peoria in New York. Be very anxious with the chopper, Fiesler. It is twice as easy for to cut off thumbs as to be careless, I'm wondering. <laughs> Chuck, Nick, don't you worry about me. Watch this. McGee, not so hot, huh? The cabbage is flying all over. Oh, well, Chuck, what's the difference? Oh. What was that? Look at the chef and ask again. <laughs> sure, Fizzer, you were for cabbaging him in the eye. Look. He's rolling up his sleeve. Oh, sure. Oh, look at his muscles, McGee. You'd better believe it. Who, me? I... <laughs> Say, brother, I'm real sorry I hit you with that piece of cabbage. Cabbages are Swiss potatoes is for making no difference with a cookie. Well, shucks, he shouldn't get sore about a little thing like that. Oh, no, Fizzer. And don't you be angrily with him when he is cutting off your ears, too, I hope so. <laughs> you hope so? Hey, listen. Don't talk so loud. Say, can he understand English? A little bit English, but he is not so fluent in languaging like educational peoples like we, if you think you know what you mean. <laughs> you sure he don't understand English, Nick? Yes, he's not very good for understanding. Well, I'll take that feller apart like a second-hand alarm clock. And he didn't give me none of them dirty looks, neither. Yes, you, you big palooka. What are you taking your bits over that way for? He's over here. <laughs> Well, he hurt me. Chuck, if he bothers me, I'll make him look like the witchy switch. Why does this, sir, uh, witching, witching? Didn't I ever tell you about the time I wrestled four fellas at once? Oh, Nick? now, McGee, are yes, you... Yes, sir, I was known as Hammerlock McGee in them days. Hammerlock McGee, the horny-handed half-nelson, whip-cracking heavyweight of the Hudson Husky. <laughs> you got time to hear this, Nick? No, I'm not... Well, sir, I says it. I got tired of tossing these fellas around one by one, so I challenged the four top heavyweight wrestlers to meet me all at one time and in the same ring. Do you think you could win a bout like this? Why, shucks, it was pie, puppy. When the bell rung, they all come for me, weaving and shuffling, and they rush. But graceful as a swan, I sidestepped, and they all come together like a bust of thunder. And you run home like lightning. No, sir. I waited till they was all mixed up, and then I stepped in, and quick to flash, I give them the work. Braiding arms and legs like I was making a wicker basket. Oh, I shucks. When I finished, they didn't know who was who. Hmm. You are wrestling with four wrestling people with making baskets, and if you don't finish, you don't know who is for how many people they should use to be? <laughs> yep, I got the diamond studded belt for that, but the funny part is, Nick, them fellers never could get untied again. No, sir. I had them so tied up in knots they couldn't get apart. They're making big money now in side shows as the marvelous Twitchy Switch Brothers. <laughs> you see, the trick was to pick them up like this. Put the stool down, Nick. Put like it this, down. Nick. Then get your shoulder on it like this and heave. Yeah. Oh, my, now you've done it. What's the oh, matter? Peter, that stool is for landing on the chef's bunion. Look out, huh? McGee, he's coming for you. Coming for to make mint please, of you, Peter. Cookie. No, no, oh, Cookie. Now, listen, Mr. Chef, shut tight. <laughs> no, no, Cookie, don't be for to lose his peppermint. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. Well, say, if you don't stop bringing me <laughs> back, I'll go see. <laughs> We don't think Pippa's going to care for the restaurant business. <laughs> but here is some food for thought. If you have hardwood floors in your home, you'll be delighted with the enriching effect of a coat of genuine Johnson's wax. The best housekeepers have found that genuine Johnson's wax makes their housework much easier and keeps their homes looking bright and cheerful. But don't think of Johnson's wax as merely a floor polish. It's a real protector and preservative for all woods and linoleum, as well as enamel and painted surfaces. Wax your furniture, your windowsills, and door frames 
enamel ice box, and cupboard shelves. Johnson's Wax will give your rooms new beauty, save the cost of refinishing floors and woodwork, and actually cut your cleaning time by one half, because dirt and dust just cannot cling to a Johnson Wax surface. And by the way, you can save up to one-third by buying Johnson's Wax, paste, or liquid in the larger sizes. <laughs> Shelley and his men playing Hot Cha Cha. And we'll meet you again next week at this same hour when Fibber and Molly invite you back to Wistful Vista for more hilarity, more harmony, and more, but need I say more? Until then, may I remind you that just as the best housekeepers use Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Glow Coat to keep their houses clean and shining, so the most particular car owners keep their cars sparkling with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. This is your old waxer of Florimone's Harlow Wilcox signing off with a riddle. What's the difference between Fibber McGee and me? One wise cracks and the other cries wax. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> the selections say it with music is from the Music Box Review. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>